Today, I am going to show you the most basic way of rehousing a tarantula. Hi guys, it's that tarantula guy here again today. For all you newbie keepers that have just got your first tees, this video is for you. Okay, so the basic things you're gonna need. First off is a spider. So this is a Gramostola rosea. It's a, a pretty standard tea. It's non-defensive, non it's, it's pretty chill. Mostly these are the things that I always hear about people getting for first tarantulas. Things like this, Gramostella rosea, Gramostella porteri, Brachypelma homori, Brachypelma baggins. All those pet rock typical tarantulas. These are the ones that you're most likely to see in pet shops and things like that. So this housing setup will work for pretty much any any new world terrestrial species. So most Gramostolas, most Brachypelmas, so just normal desert, like arid tarantulas, places from like New Mexico, Brazil, things like those, where they're, they, they're, they're mostly like dry countries, Arizona, things like those. So anything like this, Gramostola, or Phonopelma calcodes and Phonopelma samani, these kind of desert tarantulas. So, now you've got your spider, and you're thinking, well, how do I do this? So, the cheapest way I found, Poundland. Alright, so, basically, in Poundland, pound world or pound stretches or pretty much any any pound store I think in America you have Dollar Tree I, I don't know um, yeah anywhere we you can get these cheap kitchenware plastic boxes this is what you want if you want to house a tarantula on a budget this is what you want um, I think this one actually came from Argos it's just a, a clear plastic box and they have <sighs> black lids and the lids fold in the middle so you can open one side of the box at a time which was what makes them really good actually because then you can open the lid without taking the whole thing off so I really like these boxes so first things first once you've got it get yourself um, something like a Dremel like a multi-tool, like one of those little electric multi-tool things, something like that, or a little cordless drill or something, or even a soldering iron. You've got a soldering iron, works just as well. Um, first thing you want to do, air holes. So you try and space them apart. You can see I've got them all the way down on the lid, and then on the action enclosure itself, some on this panel this side, some on this panel this side. Now you'll find most teas like these Gramostolas or Brachypelmas, they really don't like humidity. Um, most of mine they they bury their water bowl, they fill it up. Um, always make sure your tea has access to water but keep it dry, they don't they don't like it moist. Right, so once you've done that, and you've got your box and your Georgia holes in it, next thing I do is give it a wash. Make sure it's nice and clean, there's nothing in there that's gonna harm the spider. Now, I use this BFAR Deep Clean, I think that's how you pronounce it, BFAR, B4. But yeah, I use this on my enclosures, because it's good for, uh, it's actually made for, area and equipment as you can see 
So this, what I do, I spray it out, give it a couple of squirts of this stuff, then give it a wipe around and then spray everything out and then let it air dry. So once that's done, you're pretty much ready to go. Right, next thing that I would do, now remember guys, I'm doing this on a budget. So normally with my enclosures, what I do is I will mix vermiculite with cocoa husk, uh, cocoa fiber, sorry, um, with some orchid bark, some live moss. I go mad and I just make this really rich, good substrate. Um, but what I have noticed is also in Pound World, they sell uh, bricks of cocoa husk, uh, cocoa fiber, and bags of vermiculite. So what we've done, or what I've done here, is I've hydrated a brick of substrate from Poundland, and I've put some vermiculite in there as well. So this is like half a brick with half a bag of vermiculite, half and half. Um, I've sprinkled some moss in there just to add with the, the humidity holding, holding the moisture inside. So it's more of a, a slow release. But yeah, so 50% cocoa fiber, 50% vermiculite, a few bits of moss mixed in with there as well. Um, and I just let that hydrate up whilst I was cleaning out the box. So once you've got that, next thing to do is look for a hide. Now, as you see with some of my enclosures, um, Charlotte especially, my therapist stomach, they have the big bits of bark or in Charlotte's case, a log. She has an actual log. Um, but for a new tea, something small, you know, she's, this thing's not massive, this is probably two inches, three inches maybe, um, yeah, yeah there's, there's my hand on the box, so, so she's not, she's not huge, but for something that size, I would go Plant pots. These things, they are really good because you can pick them up dime a dozen. Literally, you can go into Poundland and pick up like a stack of 20 of them for like a quid. So, yeah, definitely get yourself some plant pots. Um, these are really good because you can bury them, use them, you can cut them in half, whatever you want to do. I personally just leave them like that and half bury them, as you'll see. So, now that you've got the basics, you've got hide, you've got substrate, you've got your tea, you've got a box, the box is prepped. Now you start putting her in. Okay, so here we have a box, hose all drilled, ready to go. We've got substrate in this box here. Uh, I've also got a few little bits and bobs that I can use to decorate. Got some sticks, some strips of cocoa husk, a couple of plastic plants. We also have our hides. I have tongs. The spider is just here. There she is. And a catch cup. Always, always, always have a catch cup handy when you have, you're dealing with spiders, guys. It's really important. Because if that thing gets out, they can be really quick. So always have one of these on hand. Let's have a look at how we do this. So firstly, what we want to do is get some of this substrate in here. Now, you don't just want to go plonking it all in because need to think about how deep you want it. Now things like 
G. Porteris, G. Rosea's, um, Homoris, those things, Porteris, they are opportunistic burrows. So sometimes they'll bury, sometimes they won't, sometimes they'll just sit out in the open all day long. But it's always good, I find, with species like this, give them a couple of inches to burrow if they want to. Because that way, especially with something like this, because with terrestrials like, like our girl here, you don't want to give them too much vertical height. What they need is a nice thick chunk of substrate on the bottom, but then for vertical height, you don't really want to give them much more than their body, their leg span, and a half. Don't want to give them any more than that. Because where they're so heavy bodied, they cannot climb vertically. What they do is they will get up there and because they're so heavy, they risk falling. If they fall, their abdomen is so fragile that if they land awkwardly on it or if they land on something within the enclosure, they can rupture their abdomen and they can bleed to death, guys. So really, really, really be careful about how much vertical height you give your, your tarantula. They really don't need the height. They need more horizontal space with some room to dig down if they choose to. So now that you've got that, as you can see, I've got a good couple of inches of substrate there. Hardly any vertical height. That's pretty much exactly as I want it. Now, as for the mix of your substrate, you don't want it dry, but you don't want it sopping wet either. What you want it to be like is loose, but moist enough that when you squeeze it, it will hold its shape. See, when I squeeze that, it will hold its shape, as you can see, but if I squeeze, no water is dripping out. That's kind of exactly how you want it. All right, because if it's dry, and there's no moisture in there, and it's just like dust, if it decides to burrow, if your spider decides to burrow, the burrow could possibly collapse and bury your tarantula. So the moisture isn't just there for moisture, it's there for structural rigidity as well. Now, too much moisture, and that's not good for the tea either. Uh, they will become stressed out, they'll be depressed, they, you'll see them sitting up in the corners, not trying to touch the substrate as much as possible. It's a pretty sure sign that your tea is not happy. So make sure you get your substrate mix right. Okay guys? So once you've got that in, it's always good to give it a bit of a press. You don't want to compact it down so it's like concrete, but just give it a bit of a pat and you should be good to go. All right. That is basically it, guys. Basically it. I mean, so long as you've got a water dish in there, you, you, could, you could leave them like that. Not advisable, I wouldn't. Personally, I would not leave a tarantula like that, but that is basically the raw basics of what tarantula keeping is. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a couple of hides in here. Just dig these out. Like that. Put some substrate back in, just to anchor it down. All right, there we go. Now we've got a hide here, and another hide there. All right, it's really important you only keep one tarantula in here. Now, even though I've put two hides in, some of you might see it and think, oh, maybe you can put two together. No, no, no. There are very, very few species of tarantula that can live together. If you find, if I was to put both of my Gramostola roseas 
in here together. I would probably come back tomorrow and only have one left. Because spiders and tarantulas are cannibalistic guys and they will eat each other. So any of you new guys out there that are just getting into the hobby and are watching this video thinking, oh, I've got a tarantula, I want to get another one. That's fine. Grand. Really happy that you're into the hobby. Please, please, please do not put them together. Do some research, find out which species can go together and look at other people's examples of how to house those together. But today, just one spider in this box. So there we go. We've got two hides. Now we're going to get some decoration. Which are these few bits and bobs here. You don't want to over decorate your insides, guys. Because decoration makes zero difference to the tarantula. He couldn't, he or she, couldn't give two hoots about what you put in here. So long as they've got somewhere dark and quiet that they can go and sit and wait for food, they don't care how it looks. So when it comes down to decoration, guys, it is, it is purely about your own preference. But from experience and others' experience, I've kind of realized tarantulas, they don't really like it too busy. Most of the time, they're happy with just couple of sticks and a leaf that's about it if you give them too much they, they kind of tend to stress out so you don't want to be putting loads of stuff in here but at the same time you want to make it look nice which is understandable you know if you're going to be looking at this thing a lot you, you want it to be in something that looks nice so I totally understand that so some little bits and bobs couple of leaves you can use bits that you find outside I've got no problems with that so long as they're treated now the bits that I use from the outside I will bake and boil or boil and bake meaning whatever you get if you're using leaves from outside just to scatter in for some leaf litter grand just boil them first just put them in a pan boil them up, drain them off, stick them in the oven. Now, it's really, really, really dangerous putting stuff in your oven. So unless, unless you know exactly what you're doing, I wouldn't suggest it. Go and research it first. Don't just go sticking stuff in the oven. I do not want people setting their houses on fire. But what I will do is boil up whatever I get, then stick it in the oven on the lowest possible temperature and then I'll just sit and watch it literally I'll probably go and check it every five or ten minutes just to make sure I've not caught fire on anything or it's not burning or anything like that and then just wait until it dries out once it's all dried out it's good to go all right so here is our water dish this is just the lid off of a coffee jar as long as it's got a deep enough dish inside to hold some water that's all you need do not put a sponge in here don't put sponges in here tarantulas cannot drown they do not suck through a sponge they drink water just like everybody else uh, not often it's I should stress it's not very often tarantulas will drink. I hear a lot of people saying, oh my god, oh my god, my tarantula's not drinking, it must be dehydrated, oh, blah blah blah. They, they don't drink often. A lot of the moisture they get comes from their prey, so if you don't see your tarantula drink from the water bottle, it's not a big deal. Just relax, it will drink when it needs to. Alright, so, once you've got a water dish, you find somewhere where you can put it in just like so and you fill her up
just like that and there you go guys that is that's basically it in fact it's not even basically that that's it that's all you need to do so the box you like I say you go into Poundland you pick one of these up for probably about 99p maximum two quid all right just something like this with a lid it's fine um, so two quid on the box the substrate and vermiculite were a pound each and I've still got some left all of the bits of bark and sticks and stuff like that that come from the outside uh, plastic plants then it's not important to have them like I said that's just f for a visual pleasantry that's that's all it is it's it's just something nice to look at it's not important you don't need them um, and these little pot, pots that I got from Poundland as well and I got a big stack of them for a pound so to be fair if you've just got into the hobby you don't you, you don't know what's best perfect you can you can house your tarantula for probably less than a fiver so yeah that's all you need so let's get this girly in and see what she thinks now like I say guys whenever you get a tarantula out whether it's for a rehouse or basically any time you ever have the lid off always 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 have a catch cut ready as you can see that's what I have now the two things I would suggest for anybody when they first get a tarantula to buy or make is a catch cup something that you can use to catch the tarantula if it gets out it's also very good for moving tarantulas around you can put them in the catch cup cover over put it in wherever it is that you're going it means you don't have to worry about it running off you don't have to try and poke it in the right direction put it in the catch cup lift it up put it down easy catch cut number one number two I would say would be a good pair of long feeder tongs because when you feed you do not want to be sticking your hand in here so these are really good for catching a prey item and dropping it in without getting your fingers in the way so that would be my two top things to get some tongs and a catch cup so now that we've got our tongs and our catch cup well, let's get this girly out here here we go and that she is she's right in there As you can see, she's not very big. She's got loads of room in here. Now, they don't need loads of room. Tarantulas do not need loads of room. You don't need a huge tank for them. All right, they, they don't need it. A lot of the time, tarantulas will spend most of their time just tucked away in here, in one of these little hides, just waiting for food to come scuttling along in front of it. That's all they do. They don't do much. This girl, she will probably be able to stay in here her whole life. So there's no rush. You know, she won't outgrow this. She will probably only get to about this big. Now that looks like a lot actually, but yeah. You know, she'll only probably get to five inch leg span. You know, they're not massive tarantulas. So, she'll be able to stay in here. She won't need a rehouse. But something like this would be too big for a sling. So, if you've got a sling, like in my last video where we got a whole bunch of slings, you wouldn't put a sling in here. It's too big. Um, so, remember that the size of your enclosure has to be 
appreciative of the size of the tarantula. So if you've only got a tiny sling, you're not going to want a big box. And if you've got a massive tarantula, they don't need a huge, great, like 150 gallon fish tank. They, they don't. All right. So that's pretty much all you need to know without me waffling on any longer. So there you go, guys. That is how to rehouse AT on a budget. Yep, nice and simple, nothing too fancy. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you found it informative. I hope it helped. I really do. Um, I am going to do another video like this, but for arboreals. Uh, may do that next Monday because I've already got a video lined up for Friday that I'm going to film later this week so stay tuned for that um, so yeah hope you liked this video if you did make sure you leave a like leave me a comment down below let me know how you've housed all of your teas especially you new guys all of you new guys that are new to the hobby I want to know how you house things so make sure you comment down below let me know what, how you've been doing it especially some of you more experienced guys as well especially some of you other youtubers because i know you watch my videos um leave a comment down below let some of the new guys know how we house rts uh so yeah leave me a like comment down below subscribe for more go and check out the instagram at that tarantula guy and i will see you on friday for the next video bye